Hello, I'm Andrew Lissim and welcome to Kerbal Space Program point 90 or point 26, although it's point 90 because this is now the beta as opposed to the alpha, apparently. Um, I kind of want to talk about one thing in particular about this update. I don't want to talk about the update in general. There are a lot of new things in the update and uh, it's it's getting on its road to actually being, you know, a full-fledged game, lots of new features and we finally got bigger space plane parts, etc. Really nice. But there is something that really does concern me and I want to talk about that kind of at length because I feel that maybe this deserves its own little video. And that is the RAM issue, uh, the RAM limit, which uh, probably a lot of you know about and maybe some of you don't. So let's just go into the very background of this in that your computer has RAM, random access memory, which is, you know, basically it holds uh, the data that you're currently going to be using ready for the computer to use it and the computer accesses it from the RAM. So Kerbal Space Program loads, as you just saw, all of its assets at game start. So it takes the entire th game, everything you're going to use, and puts it into the RAM. And this is a bit of an issue. Now, a lot of other games load this dynamically, which is why you get, you know, you get load boundaries. So you have levels, you have, you know, different regions on maps and so on. Kerbal Space Program doesn't have that. It loads all of its stuff at the beginning, which avoids, you know, load boundaries, etc. But it does have some major issues in that you've loaded an entire game at once. And there is a limit to how much you can load. So, Kerbal Space Program is pretty much a 32-bit application. There is a 64-bit version, but it is incredibly buggy to the point that basically a lot of modders uh, have basically just turned around and said, we're not going to do anything for this. It's too buggy. It doesn't work. And squad themselves with the knowledge that it is incredibly flawed. And there are some issues that, you know, they would like to get around to resolving, but they're waiting for Unity 5. And I'll get more onto that in uh, a little bit later. So for a 32-bit application, like the vast majority of us run for Kerbal Space Program, you have a limit how much RAM you can run. Now, it's a math thing. The 32-bit, basically, uh, it, it's, it's a math thing on how much, you know, you can really access of your RAM. So, with a 32-bit application on a 32-bit operating system, which is not the majority of people these days, 32-bit operating systems really sort of started to be phased out about, I don't know, eight years ago. So, they're less common these days. You can only access 1.75 gigabytes of your RAM. For a 32-bit... Uh, Operating system, uh, sorry, for a 32-bit program on a 64-bit operating system, which is the majority of us running Kerbal Space Program, you can access up to, I think, roughly about 3.5 gigabytes if you take into account the fact that the system needs some of it. Um, so you have a little bit more to play with. And here is the issue. Kerbal Space Program, now I've, I've looked, booted it up now, I've booted it up, I've got 64-bit operating system, I've booted up the 32-bit version. Kerbal Space Program is currently using 2.2 gigabytes, just being booted up to the main menu. This would not boot up just wouldn't boot up. It would just crash straight away if you tried to boot this system, uh, this up on a different system that's a 32-bit system. 32-bit Kerbal Space Program, if you try and boot it up on a 32-bit system, would crash. However, in point 90, because of all the stuff they added and pushed it over the limit so that it would crash on a 32-bit system, they changed something. If we go into settings, under graphics, here, texture quality. Changing this so you can change it down to half means that the textures that the game loads, so the images that get uh, put onto your parts, are at half quality. And this means that they're smaller, which means that they take up less of your RAM, and so that your game can load. If I reload the game with this at half res, I think it only loads about 1.55, 1.6 gigabytes to your RAM. And of course, anyone on the 32-bit operating system with 32-bit KSP can only load 1.75. So, with the advent of point ninety. Anyone with a 32-bit operating system who wants to run KSP actually can't run it at full, you know, full texture quality. And this is an issue for me. Um, not only is it an issue because you have to, you know, you halve your quality of your textures, etc. because of this, uh, this bloat to do with, you know, more things are being added. And as more things are added, more models are added to the game, more textures are added to these models. It starts to become to the point where you know, the texture quality has to be half for people on 32 operating systems to actually play it. It's an issue for me because also I tend to like running mods with my game. Now, Kerbal Space Program is a game that is very much, you know, reliant on its modding community for a lot of stuff. I mean, um, Fine Print, a contract that's just got worked in, um, the space plane parts for Mark IIs and the Mark Threes to a certain extent, all come down to mods. Those were all, you know, originally mods, or in the case of the Mark Threes, it's an extension of the mod that got, you know, uh, put into the game in point twenty five. The modern community and Kerbal Space Program have a very symbiotic relationship in that regard. And that KSP is definitely a game that has got a lot of, you know, 
lifetime for a lot of people through its mods. But mods add to the amount of stuff you have in your RAM. And I personally, way before today, have experienced many crashes because I have gone over my RAM limit, because I've had a lot of mods installed. Now, there are issues and ways to sort of try and get around it and save a little bit of space, but ultimately it really does come down to the fact that you are hard capped with the 32-bit application at, if you're on a 32-bit operating system, 1.75 gigs, and if you're on a 64-bit operating system, at about 3.5, roughly. And this means that anyone on a 32-bit operating system has to run the game at half res, and then has about 200 megabytes-ish, and that's just loading to the main screen, that's not actually going into the game where it tends to fluctuate upwards from there, to play with. They, they don't have much in the way of they can actually add any mods. So basically, if you're on a 32-bit operating system and you want to run KSP, you are going to have to run it at minimum half graphics, and that's just to get to the main menu. You might actually have to go down to something like quarter res to actually get any mods on board. That's crippling to their gameplay experience. Especially if you, you know, you want to use mods. Now, I understand that maybe it's something like only... I don't know the figures. I'd imagine it's not as much as we expect people using mods. A lot of people who play KSP probably haven't played it a lot in depth. But for people who have, it's a little bit worrying. Now, the issue... I find this a big issue because it's been something that we've known about for a long time. As the game has got bigger and more things have been added, we've seen this RAM limit getting closer. And I remember as soon as I picked it up and as soon as I started modding the game, I got a few crashes and I checked around and it turned out they were RAM related. And if it's something that players have known about after they just get into the game and start modding it or adding their mods, it's something that Squad really should have addressed a lot earlier. Now, I don't know what they could have done about it other than completely redoing the game so that it doesn't load the assets at game start, or maybe doing a couple of things to do with compression, but those only gain you so much. It is an issue, and there is a few ways you can you can see to get around it. Now, Unity 4, which is the game engine that Kerbal Spectrum currently uses, has issues with its 64-bit system, which is why Kerbal Space Program's 64-bit version is buggy. It's not Squad's fault, uh, so far as I know, mostly. It is mostly down to Unity 64, uh, Unity's 64-bit version, Unity 4 being, just frankly, not very good. Unity 5, which will be coming out at some point in the future, not too long, but frankly no one knows, I guess other than maybe Unity themselves, Unity 5 is going to improve upon that, so hopefully when we see the advent of Unity 5 and Kerbal Space Program is redone for Unity 5 and done for the 64-bit version of Unity 5, we'll see that the 64-bit version of, Un of uh, Kerbal Space Program becomes a lot more stable and we can actually use that. People on 64-bit operating systems can actually, you know, have a, have a full Kerbal Space Program experience and chuck on a lot of mods. But... Right now, people on 64-bit systems having to play with the 32-bit version because, well, the 64-bit version is just a very buggy and mods have just stopped working for it. Mods have just said, we're not supporting 64-bit because it's too buggy. You only have, uh, at max, 1.3 gigabytes to play with. Now, that does seem like a lot, but it does add up. Um, particularly when you consider that, of course, the game does fluctuate upwards in its RAM usage. I've just quoted the RAM usage from getting to the main menu, and getting to the main menu is the minimum. It's something that does concern me, and it will impact people's gameplay experience. And I, if I, I will, I will, there will be a lot of people with point ninety who go to point ninety, who are upgrading, and like, oh, there's great additions to the campaign, and then they try and install mods, and they're like, why can't I get quite so many mods as I used to? And it's because that point ninety has definitely increased the amount of stuff being loaded into the game to such an extent that we're actually having some major issues here, to the point that you know, thirty-two bit operating systems running the thirty-two bit version have to run it at half res. They they can't run it at full. It's simply not possible for them. Now, don't get me wrong. I I do like Kerbal Space Program. It's it's you know it's a great game, etc. I have played so many hours that it's in insane. But this is going to be an issue. And until Unity you know five comes out, and then people on sixty four bit versions you know they'll they'll be happy enough they can run the sixty four bit version. Air I think will be in theory. I say in theory because you know things can change. Hunky dory. Up until that point, we're going to have some issues, and people on 32-bit operating systems are now having massive issues. People on 32-bit systems, I don't think they're going to get any better for them. They're going to have to play this at half res, and probably if they want to run any mods, move over to quarter res. And it's just not going to look 
as good in game for them. And while that's acceptable, they are running a 32-bit operating system, which you know is is fairly maybe not quite archaic, but it is certainly a very much a minority by now. It's not ideal, and the minimum spec, or you know, possibly even the recommended spec for KSP, does need to be updated because currently it it says you know a thirty two bit's fine, etc. Uh, that that needs to be updated. So just be aware that if you're running a lot of mods, or you want to run a lot of mods, or you want to dive back into KSP, and you you run mods in the past, or you run a thirty two bit operating system, just be aware of the issues that are involved in it. Now. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to Unity 5. Hopefully that will solve the, th the 64-bit issue for, you know, the 64-bit version, make it actually viable, mean that people can just mod to their heart's content again. Um, but right now, what we're seeing is, with the incremental increase in stuff in Kerbal Space Program, it gets further on in development, we are seeing the room for mods being decreased. And mods are something that I really love about KSP. I love the vibrant modding community. I love the variety of mods you can get. I love you, what you can do with mods. You can take Kerbal Space Program, you can turn it into, you know, a war game thing, or this, that, and the other, or you could have resource gathering, and I do think this is um, cutting down on that sort of, you know, freedom. It's not something that's the end of the world, uh, at least not for, you know, people on 64-bit systems, which is the majority of us, but it's just something to bear in mind, so I did want to do a video on it for this update, and it's why I'm a little bit more reserved about this update. I mean, it, it does add some great things, and it's, you know, it's a lovely movement on the road down the line, but I'm just a little bit more wary, because I like to run mods, and until we get a 64-bit version that's viable, for me personally, Kill Switch for me is going to be one of these things that I have to sort of look at and go, I really love you, but you're a Montague and I'm a Capula, or something like that. Shakespeare references for no reason. Anyway, um, I've been interested we're just going to end it here. I, I think I just wanted to talk about it, and I'm sorry that there's no real gameplay and no flashy things, uh, but it's to talk about RAM limits and updates. It's not that interesting, I guess, for a lot of people, but I hope for those of you who, you know, find it somewhat concerning or worrying, or you really like your mods, or you are running a 32-bit system, or you've had random crashes, that somehow it's enlightening. Oh, and briefly before I go... One thing I do find weird is that they have not, uh, Squad have not introduced a, an error message for the user for a RAM crash. And it's something that I've I've asked about a year ago even, uh, when I first joined the media group. This idea was put forward by a couple of uh, people in the YouTube media group. Having a warning saying, you're about to exceed your RAM limit. This is the reason for the crash. Uh, because it's a very common cause of crash, and... Frankly, there's no easy way to diagnose it, other than the fact you can look at your RAM and go, oh, oh, I'm obviously going to be hitting the RAM limit. But there isn't an easy way in game to know it. And it's something that I would like Squad to at least acknowledge with a with a warning in game, so that you know it's just easy for... Because a lot of people will get this crash, especially if you've got 30 operating system and you try and up the graphics, you'll instantly crash and one your load. Um, it's something I would like Squad to at least put a message in to acknowledge, so that we know when we're crashing because of RAM. Because when I try and load mods up and I add more mods to a game... Um, I don't know when I've hit the RAM limit without really, you know, looking for it and testing it. I, w I would like an easier way of knowing that, and it's certainly one of the most common causes of crashes with KSP. KSP is not unstable, it's not one of those alphas, it's just the fact that one of the common causes of crashes is you've exceeded your RAM limit. And yet there is no sign in game of that really being acknowledged. I would like a warning for that, that would be nice, having a nice little error message come saying you're about to exceed your RAM limit, careful, um, whatever. So, yeah. If you've liked the video, please remember to like the video, I guess. And if you're not subscribed and you want to see or hear or whatever more, I don't know, uh, then, you know, subscribe to the channel. But until next time and, you know, whenever that will be, stay shiny.